What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to talk a little bit more about the extension Clothworks, which is a really fun extension for simulating cloth inside of SketchUp. Well in today's video I wanted to talk you through how to create a pillow inside of Clothworks. So you can use this in order to create more realistic pillows than you could by like thickening an object or rounding corners off or other things like that. So um, let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one thing to note is I believe you're going to need the paid version of Clothworks in order to do this. I will link to that on the Sketchication page. There is a free version that you can bring in, but I think this one uses some paid features. So I think you're going to need the paid version for everything here to work. But um, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to model out a rectangle the size of the pillow that we want to create. So in this case, I'm just going to draw a rectangle and we'll go with something about this big. I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to reverse the faces. So remember within Clothworks, the first thing we need to do, because this is going to simulate these as objects, is we need to take this and we need to make it a group. So we're going to double click, right click, and click on make group. And then from there, we're going to right click on it and under Clothworks, there's an option for make cloth. Make sure you have the extension enabled in order to do this. So um, we're going to make this a cloth and then the the first thing we need to do is we need to add some detail to this, right? Because as of right now, there's really nothing to simulate because there's no detail to this face. And so we're going to start by using the built-in subdivision functions. So we're just going to right-click on this, go to Clothworks, and under Cloth, there's options in here for different kinds of grid. In this case, I'm just going to apply an, a quadrilateral grid, probably to a resolution of about 3000. So you kind of have to uh, walk the line between too much detail, which is going to make your system run too slow, and too little detail, which is going to make your simulation not look very good. So we'll go with 3000 for right now. So I'm just going to click on OK. So once we do that, it looks like nothing happened. However, if you go to View, Hidden Geometry, you can see that there's actually a bunch of hidden geometry in here now. This was basically subdivided into a bunch of faces, which gives Clothworks something else to kind of simulate with. And so the first thing we need to pay attention to is this currently doesn't have any thickness, right? Like it's just a face, so we can't make a pillow out of it because it needs to have thickness so it can kind of billow outward. And so there's a tool built in. If you right click and go down to Clothworks again, under cloth called generate thickness. What generate thickness is going to do is it's actually going to give this object a thickness. So in this case, I'm just going to go to cloth, generate thickness, and we're going to set our thickness to something that makes sense for a pillow. Just remember that this thickness is basically going to set the seam width of your pillow. I'm just going to leave this at 3 eighths of an inch, and I'm just going to click on OK. So when I do that, Notice how what this does is this comes through here and it thickens this while also maintaining the same level of detail that was inside of it before. So you can see how this is subdivided the same as this is subdivided. Well now, what we want to do is we want to start simulating our cloth. And so if we were to run this right now, if we were to just hit play, this would just fall out of the frame, right? Like as you see it fall, it's not really doing what we want it to do, it's just kind of like falling. And so the first thing we want to do, and I'm just going to undo this, is we want to go into our settings and we want to turn our gravity down. So in our simulation, we're going to turn gravity down so this doesn't fall. So now, if I was to click play, it's just going to kind of sit there, right? Um, so it's just kind of like hanging in the air, which is good because we don't want it falling out of our frame. And so now we can kind of adjust some of the settings in here in order to make this a little bit more billowy. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into our cloth settings. And so there's a setting that's going to be really important in here called preserve shape. And what we want to do is we want to uncheck that because as of right now, this is currently trying to maintain the original shape of our object instead of kind of letting it float off and create that kind of like billowy um, cloth look of our pillow. So we're going to go ahead and uncheck this and notice how as soon as we uncheck this, this kind of starts inflating right? So what happens is this object isn't trying to maintain that rectangular shape anymore. And so that allows it to kind of inflate. And notice how it runs kind of slowly right now. Well, let's go in and make some more changes. First thing we want to do is we want to turn on self collide because otherwise your faces can kind of like go through each other and you don't really want that. So I'm going to click on self collide and that's just going to be something that's going to kind of protect us from, um, 
that's going to protect our object from um, running through itself and creating those kind of like weird results, right? So the first thing I want to do is I want to take my bend and I want to turn my bend up. And so notice how as I turn my bend up, this is now inflating. The reason it's inflating is because we're allowing these faces to bend more. And so you could take this all the way up to one if you wanted to. Notice how it's going to bend more quickly if you do that. So that bend is going to allow this to kind of inflate. And at any point, you can just kind of click stop in order to stop this simulation. And even right there, that's actually a pretty decent looking pillow, um, just with the inflation as it is right now. And so from here, there's a few steps we can kind of follow, right? So this is simulating. There's some other things we could change, like we could bring our stretch down a little bit. So notice how you don't want to set it to zero because you kind of lose all of your shape, right? You lose your corners and your seam around the outside. But if you were to turn your stretch all the way up, for example, what this is doing is it's defining the strength of the springs that are in here. So the weaker this is, the more kind of billowy and the more um, you're going to kind of lose that original shape, the stronger this is, the more you're going to kind of maintain that original shape. And so you can kind of play around with this. Um, you don't need to do too much with it if you don't want to, but notice how if I move this to the left, then my corners kind of move inward. It's just kind of more inflated looking. If I move it to the right, you're maintaining a little bit more of that original shape. So it feels like this is pulled a little bit tighter across here. And a lot of that is going to have to do with the effect that you're trying to create with your pillow. And so I don't want to spend too much time messing around with the settings on this. You definitely could. So there's some things that we're going to talk about in a second. The plugin developer does note that when you're doing this, you might want to check this box for use the OpenGL. Um, so it says that's going to be a little bit faster when you're doing this. And it also allows you to visualize it while you're in the simulation. But now let's say that you don't just want this to be kind of puffy right? Um, let's say that you wanted to kind of adjust this so that um, it's got some extra folds in it and things like that. Because right now, if I was to hit stop, um, it just maybe looks a little bit too perfect, right? Um, it just looks like it hasn't been used. And so there's some things we can do in order to adjust that. And so let's start off by creating a face that this is going to sit on um, because we're going to turn our gravity back on and we need to have something that this can kind of sit on so that it doesn't like fall down, right? So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to draw that face. I'm going to move my object up a little bit. Don't move it up too far because if you run this simulation, it'll take a long time to fall down to this object. Um, but I'm going to take this object, just double click on it, make it a group. I'll go ahead and reverse this face. And then I'm just going to go into Clothworks for this object. I'm just going to make it a collider. So basically all that does is that means that this object is now something that live objects will um, kind of run into. So instead of just falling through them, it'll collide with them. And so then we just want to go back. We want to go into our simulation and we want to turn our gravity up a little bit, like enough that our pillow is going to fall onto this face, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click play. And so if you watch our pillow, you're going to notice that this is now going to fall down and sit on this face. And so that's kind of what we want, right? Because we want this to be a little bit more um, realistic in the sense that we actually want it to simulate gravity in here. Notice if you turn the gravity up, this is going to be flatter. If you turn the gravity down, you're going to get a little bit more of that inflation. And we could go back to our cloth and adjust things like our stretch in order to um, kind of inflate this back up just like this. All right, so now let's play around with a few more settings, right? So we've got our gravity set, this is, so this is going to fall down onto the ground. Let's add some folds to this cloth. There's a little bit of kind of playing around with this that you're going to have to do in order to really get the results that you want. But here's some things that I'm kind of finding some success with. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our stretch and our bend and adjust them down. So I'm going to take this value like this and drag this over. I'm also going to adjust my bend over like this. Then I've also adjusted the thickness of my object a little bit. Well, now I'm going to take the face of this material. I'm going to kind of drag it over like this. And so notice how when I drag it over, I'm able to add some kind of like folds to this cloth material. And so one thing you might want to think about is you might want to think about clicking over to the simulation and turning the viscosity up when you do this. So now if I click and drag this over, I'm going to kind of let this fold a little bit 
because it's going to kind of shoot back, right? So you need to drag it back a ways so that it doesn't just like bounce right back to where it was, right? But you can take this and you can kind of drag some of your faces in and just kind of deform your cloth a little bit when you're doing this in some different areas. And then when you're done, you're just going to click the stop button. So when you click the stop button, what you've done is you've created this pillow that's got kind of some ins and outs and it looks like it's just kind of been sitting there. It's been kind of smashed down in some different ways, things like that. There's a little bit of playing around here that you're going to have to do in order to really kind of get the results that you're looking for. But last thing I want to talk about in here is I want to talk about textures right? Because at the moment, there's no textures applied to this. Well, let's say that I was to apply a texture like maybe this uh, wallpaper dog bone texture. Well, notice how it's all messed up, right? Um, so the UV mapping wasn't maintained when we created this um, on the outside of the group. And so because of that, we can't really have a proper material on here. And so there's actually tools built in to do this. So first off in your simulation, you want to make sure that the box for update textures is uh, checked. So that's gonna be really important. And then what we can do is we can just double click in here. And first of all, if we were to do a control A and apply this material, it's still not gonna work, right? So the reason that it's not gonna work is because this has already been kind of subdivided and messed up. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on this object. We wanna click on this button right here to toggle the drape. So what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to double click in here, do a control A to select everything, and then apply the material. So once we apply the material, then if we click on it again and click on the button for toggle drape again, notice how now that material is applied properly to your pillow. So you can use this in order to really quickly apply those materials in here. One other thing you might think about doing is you might think about like let's say that your pillow has some kind of like piping in here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a front view. I'm going to turn parallel projection on. And then I am just going to pick up the faces right here by doing a right to left crossing selection. So when I do that, that's only picked up the edges. Well, now we could apply maybe like a color to the outside of this. So let's say that this was going to have maybe like a teal color or something like that. You could apply that to the outside, right? And then once you do that, you can click on this, you toggle your drape. Well, notice how now that edge right there has a different color applied to it than the rest of your pillow. So you can use this in order to kind of customize your materials inside your model. And then from there, you can kind of rotate this around, sit it up, do whatever it is you want to do with it in order to make your pillow look a little bit more realistic. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Are you using Clothworks? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketches up content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.